Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over some old hat boxes that my friend Loretta brought to me. Uh, she had several of these and some of them weren't in the best of condition, but that isn't a problem because we're going to uh, use some uh, tape to reinforce them before we finish um, making them over. So I'm just going to take some tape around the top of or the outer rim of the the lid and that will give it some strength and it doesn't matter that it's there because i'm going to cover it up so and now i'm just kind of taping where i need extra support um and um that will be enough to strengthen this because it isn't going to be a box that that you'll store anything heavy in these boxes are going to be more about uh, decor but you know you could you could store small things in it that weren't too heavy but like I said it's mostly going to be about decor so uh, I love that little art right in the center of this but I can't really make it go with what I'm going to be doing so I'm just taking um, the color dust cloth or drop cloth rather and um, and putting a coat on the entire box um, I'm not worrying about full coverage here because I'm going to be doing some decoupage and, and things like that. So, um, I just need a, a good base color. So I'm doing that with, with the, the whole box and I'm not going to worry with making over the inside of these because like I said, it's just going to be more about, these will be stacked as a set and, uh, and, I doubt that they'll be opened very much. Now you wouldn't have to have hat boxes here. You could have any cardboard box that has a lid uh, and you could kind of do the same type of, uh, of design with that also. But um, I see these hat boxes at thrift stores a lot and, and usually when I see them they're a little bit pricey so I was happy to get these given to me. And now I'm just making uh, a mold here for uh, for that the rim of the lid, and I'm using this uh, craft clay here because it dries more like foam. Uh, I bought it and was trying to save money and trying to uh, use different types of clays to see which I like best, and this one works great for things like this but uh, it dries kind of foamy and as you can see there I was just kind of slinging it around to show that it doesn't crack it's it's very sturdy but um, it just doesn't work well for it doesn't dry like clay so uh, I'm just gonna I like to use it on cardboard and lightweight items like that so because I have this tape all around this for support then I'm gonna glue these molds all the way around and I'm using tight bond here, the thick and quick. I, I really like how it works on uh, on the the clay that I usually use, but it also works well on this. But I always make sure to rub this around and get it on really close to the edges because I don't want those edges to pop up anywhere. So like I said, I just glue this all the way around this this lid. And other than the fact that this dresses this box up a lot, um, another thing that I like about doing this is it adds some weight to the lid. And uh, adding that weight to the lid um, not only makes the lid go on really well, but it also um, sturdies it up even more because uh, a lot of these seams are, are off the corners and so it just strengthens those corners a lot. And this will dry slightly lighter weight, uh, but it's still gonna have some, some more weight to it. And I could take my fingers and kind of smush those uh, seams together, but I don't really worry about it on here. Uh, it turns out to look really good, I think, anyway, so I, I'm not worrying much with those seams. Now, I guess you could maybe glue something in the center of each of those if they bothered you or like I said just kind of press them together more or take some 
uh, other clay and just kind of uh, put some in between that but I didn't do it and like I said it didn't bother me here but I do have to let this dry a couple hours um, because I want that glue to set up good so um, now I'm ready to start decoupaging the box and this is a Tim, Hol Tim uh, Holtz decoupage paper and uh, I'm trying to decide here because it doesn't cover the entire box which which way I want to put it and I decided here to put it all the way at the top of the box because I'm going to paint the bottom of this a different color I decided because I want um, I wanted to uh, create a color scheme here and um, so I decided on black white and a rose color and I have um, Dixie Belle carry has a, a color called two rose and I really like it but it's a cooler rose color so I mixed half tea rose and half apricot and that's also a Dixie Belle color and it made this beautiful blush pink and I think it is the perfect color to pair with this black and white so I just give this one coat and um, I just kind of carefully paint that but I don't worry about it being exact at the bottom because I'm going to be adding something also to that so I paint the bottom of this box also and then I decided that I want this lid to be the same color so I painted painted uh, the entire lid uh, the same color of pink and I think I'm going to be mixing this color up often because like I said I, I really like the tea rose but um, and I, the apricot I like it also but it's a little bit too peachy colored for me so I think that I'm just going to mix those two colors and use those a lot myself and now I'm using uh, this um, kindest regards stamp and I, I use this thing a lot uh, because it just it's such a big surface area and it just adds so much to uh, larger surfaces that you can kind of layer up if you want and I thrifted this beautiful ribbon or lace uh, probably about a year ago and I was able to buy so much of it for I think maybe four dollars uh, and so it's been a great value because I've used it on so many different things and it is the perfect color for this pink and that wasn't on purpose it's just after I mixed this pink and decided to use it I thought of this this uh, lace and pulled it out and it was the exact same color so there's why I didn't have to have an exactly straight line when I painted that bottom because this lace is going to kind of distract anyway and then when I got this covered uh, or got this attached onto the box then I decided that I wanted to do some white waxing on the, that uh, on those molds so I just kind of worked a little bit of the white wax in there and wiped it off and just to kind of bring out all that detail now I'm not, not going to do a lot in the way of um, embellishment on the top of this box because this is going to be the larger box which will be on the bottom so I want to make sure that I keep a good flat surface so that uh, that they can stack and here I'm just making a little uh, tassel out of some scraps of um, fabric and some pieces of lace and then I'm going to attach that to the lid of this box and I'll do this I realized that I didn't really do this much in detail and I'll do some tassels in another video and do those more in detail but I'm literally just taking some strips of fabric and tying them together in the center and then um, putting them together and wrapping some other string around the top uh, and I know I may not be um, explaining that well enough but uh, like I said I'll do some more in the future and if I'd had more time, I would have done it on this one, but this one was starting to get a little bit lengthy, so um, I decided to cut it short. But you can also buy these tassels. 
And now here I am attaching that tassel to the inside of the lid. And that just kind of adds a little something to dress up the front of this box. And I think this one turned out really neat. And I'm just loving this color scheme of the off-white black and and um, I call that kind of a dusty rose color. Now, I love hat boxes, but uh, I don't think that they look that good just displayed by themselves. So I kind of like them in stacks of three. And as you can notice there, that bottom, I really liked how the bottom looked. Uh, but this top is faded out. The lid is faded out a lot. So I'm going to leave the bottom of, of the box uh, with with the color print that's on it and and this color of uh rose is is in that print so and now this little string that's on here is also the color the rose color that i want so i'm just taking it out so that i can paint this uh, box and i'm uh, able to cover this well with um with just one coat of this paint and the lid of this box was also in pretty bad condition, probably worse than the other box. And uh, so I'm going to have to take some tape and uh, reinforce it as well. So I just take some tape and uh, just tape right over the seam and just kind of straddle that seam all the way around. And again, I don't have to worry about this tape showing because um, I'm going to be... For one thing, the uh, chalk paint covers it pretty well, but uh, also um, I'm going to be adding some things to this one also. And again, I know the, the inside of this box is kind of rough, but I'm not worrying about the inside. So I give this entire box, lid and everything, um, a coat of this pink. And then I decide to start adding some embellishments. And although I do want to keep this a solid pink color, uh, I want to add some texture. So I thrifted this ribbon, and um, although it's pretty, uh, this color of pink on it is not right for this box, or I don't think it is. And, and I didn't want that white on there either. So I'm just adding this for texture. So I just glue around the top and the bottom and uh, get this ribbon or this lace on here well. And then I, I even go back and add some glue here and there so that I know that it's flush on the box. And then I decide that I want some texture on the top of the lid. And um, so I decide to add more lace there. And there's actually going to be quite a bit of lace on this one, but uh, it's still going to be a solid color. So I had this little doily, this little heart doily, and uh, as you can see there, it has a made in China tag on it, so it isn't handmade. I'm not messing up anyone's work, but um, but I'm just gluing this on here and um, adding some texture to the top. And then once I get this on the top, and I'm happy with how secure it is, uh, because I do want it completely flush, then uh, I found a ribbon that I wanted to use around the rim of the lid. And this particular ribbon, again, it's just about texture, uh, is wider than I want. So uh, I'm just going to uh, trim around uh, the top of this, or the trim the bottom off of this lace just enough to where I have just enough of the lace to kind of wrap around that bottom and glue secure. So here I am just gluing that secure. I could have used the whole thing and not worried with trimming it, but I wasn't sure if I had that much excess lace, if it would, if the box would close well. So I'm just uh, doing it this way too. But now here you really have to use a low temp glue gun because I had it all over my fingers. I had to stop in between several times just so that I could take it off my, get the glue off my thumb and still be able to work with it. So just make sure you use a low temp glue gun. And so now that I have all the texture that I want to add onto this box, then I'm going to take that same pink and give it another good coat. And uh, it, it really paints well. And like I said, all that this does is just add texture to the top 
or to the box. And then I'm doing the same thing with the outer rim of the lid. And I'll do the same thing to that ribbon on the bottom or that lace on the bottom. And those little touches on this will make such a big difference. Uh, you, you won't even recognize the box when it's finished. Uh, and there's some extra steps here. I mean, there, there may seem like there's a lot of steps, but this is very easy to do. Uh, and you can do it with just little scraps that you have around the house. So once I get this covered well and it's all dry, then um, I decided that maybe I wanted to add a little something. And I've already put that, that uh, rope on that came with it. And this is just one little word that I had left over from a stencil that I've been using for a while now. And I don't know what this word is. I'm sure one of you will know what it is. But I don't. I just know it's something French. And I thought just this one little word might be just what this box needs to kind of bring it together with uh, the color scheme of the other boxes. And so I'm just kind of carefully uh, transferring this on because you don't have anything solid there and you can't put something flat behind it. So you just kind of have to hold your hand behind it and be careful. But uh, I really like how that one turned out, and I think that little word was just enough. And now I may find out that it says something that makes no sense, but uh, it looks pretty, so that's really all that I was concerned about. And then for the third box, this one is uh, smaller than the other two. So I started with the large one, of course, and then a little bit smaller, and now this one is the smallest. And I have this little trinket mold, and this is a redesign mold. And I'm using that same clay here that dries um, kind of like foam. And I'm making this one little flower. And so I just have to make several of these. But as you can see, that goes really quick. So it doesn't take me long at all to make enough of these to go around the lid of this box. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm making enough of these to go around the, the entire lid of this box. And there they are made. And now I'm just taking some tight bond thick and quick and just gluing these all the way around the box. Now I didn't worry here about painting this lid because at this point I haven't decided exactly what color I'm going with here. I just wanted to get these molds on here to dry. And like I said, this one is probably a little bit more, no, I don't guess it is t more time consuming because the other mold it took just as long to make around that large box. So um, really didn't take long to do these. And now I decided that I wanted this lid to be black. So I'm painting the top of the lid and also those little molds all black. So I've decided here that I want this box to be, to have a black lid and uh, the drop cloth color on the body of the box so um like i said i'm just kind of trying to bring that color scheme together and uh, i just decided as i went i started with that bottom box and then i decided what color i wanted to have next to that and then on the third one the same thing and now here i've painted the body of this one the color drop cloth and uh, this was a friend of mine bought some uh, transfers and she just uh, let me take them home to make copies of them. So this is literally just co uh, copy paper. And uh, I just cut out a part of that um, image that I wanted on this box. And um, I took some watered down uh, paint in the color pine tone just so that I could kind of age this paper and uh, it looks a little dark here but it dries just like I want it so uh, I'm just decoupaging that on the front of this box and I feel like this really makes it look like a hat box and you could use any art here this is you can on the graphics fairy you can download free art uh, and print it out on your computer and like I said you can just decoupage just plain computer paper onto so many of the items that you craft. And I decided I wanted to antique this box just a little bit more also. 
and I think that one turned out really pretty it's, it's kind of a simple one but uh, I think it's really pretty now I thought about um, maybe doing some sort of a stamp on the top of this box or maybe even even another mold but I decided I wanted to keep it simple and I think white wax is going to be just enough uh, but and I, when I put that white wax on I just make sure and wipe it off really well and you could put a clear wax on first to make sure that it wipes off easier but I felt confident enough that I could get enough of it wiped off and and so I just kind of skipped that step but um, I think that this white wax really added to this box and I think that each of these boxes are really pretty on their own uh, but when you uh, when you do them as a grouping like this and you work your color scheme together it just uh, it really takes them to another level I feel like and there they are stacked together and they just look like old hat boxes I think but they're just um, you can make them to match your decor and if this isn't the color scheme that you use then you can uh, work them to to go in the color scheme that you're using but I just really like how these turned out I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.